Question 1. What should you do as you approach this bridge? D. Slow down. You should slow down and be cautious. Pump bridges are often narrow and there may not be enough room for you to pass an oncoming vehicle at this point. Also, there's no footpath, so be aware of pedestrians in the road. If you learn DVSA theory test in proper way, you can download theory test app from the app store link in the description. Question 2. You're being overtaken by a long, heavily laden lorry. What should you do if it's taking a long time for it to overtake? C. Slow down. A long lorry with a heavy load will need more time to pass you than a car, especially on an uphill stretch of road. Slow down and allow the lorry to pass. Question 3. You wish to turn right ahead. Why should you take up the correct position in good time? D. To help other road users know what you intend to do. If you wish to turn right into a side road, take up your position in good time. Move to the center of the road when it's safe to do so. This will allow vehicles to pass you on the left. Early planning will show other traffic what you intend to do. Question 4. What should you do when you're overtaking at night? A. Beware of bends in the road ahead. Don't overtake if there's a possibility of a road junction, bend or brow of a bridge or hill ahead. There are many hazards that are difficult to see in the dark. Only overtake if you're certain that the road ahead is clear. Don't take a chance. Question 5. What's the meaning of this sign? The national speed limit applies. This sign doesn't tell you the speed limit in figures. You should know the speed limit for the type of road that you're on and the type of vehicle that you're driving. Study your copy of the highway code. Question 6. When may you enter a box junction? D. When your exit road is clear. Yellow box junctions are marked on the road to prevent the road becoming blocked. Don't enter the box unless your exit road is clear. You may wait in the box if you want to turn right and your exit road is clear but oncoming traffic or other vehicles waiting to turn right are preventing you from making the turn. Question 7. Which type of vehicle does this sign apply to? B. High Vehicles The triangular shapes above and below the dimensions indicate a height restriction that applies to the road ahead. Question 8. What does this sign mean? C. End of restricted parking area. Even though you've left the restricted area, make sure that you park where you won't endanger other road users or cause an obstruction. Question 9. What does this sign mean? D. 
A. Distance to parking place ahead. If you intend to stop and rest, this sign allows you time to reduce speed and pull over safely. Question 10. What does this traffic sign mean? A. Give priority to oncoming traffic. Priority signs are normally shown where the road is narrow and there isn't enough room for two vehicles to pass. Examples are narrow bridges, road works and where there's a width restriction. Make sure you know who is priority, don't force your way through. Show courtesy and consideration to other road users. Question 11. What does this sign mean? B. Lane for heavy and slow vehicles. Where there's a long, steep, uphill gradient on a motorway, a crawler lane may be provided. This helps the traffic to flow by diverting the slow heavy vehicles into a dedicated lane on the left. Question 12. What does this sign mean? C. Right-hand lane closed ahead. You should change lanes as directed by the sign. Here, the right-hand lane is closed but the left-hand and center lanes are available. Merging in turn is recommended when it's safe and traffic is going slowly, for example, at roadworks or a road traffic incident. When vehicles are traveling at speed, this isn't advisable and you should move into the appropriate lane in good time. Question 13. How should the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway be used? D. As an overtaking lane. You should stay in the left-hand lane of a motorway unless you're overtaking another vehicle. The right-hand lane of a motorway is an overtaking lane, it isn't the fast lane. After overtaking, move back to the left when it's safe to do so. Question 14. What's the national speed limit on a single carriageway road? C 60 miles per hour. If you're traveling on a dual carriageway that becomes a single carriageway road, reduce your speed gradually so that you aren't exceeding the limit as you enter. There might not be a sign to remind you of the limit. So make sure you know the speed limits for different types of road and vehicle. Question 15. What's a rumble device designed to do? A. Alert you to a hazard. A rumble device consists of raised markings or strips, designed to give drivers an audible, visual and tactile warning. These devices are used in various locations, including in the line separating the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane on the motorway and on the approach to some hazards, to alert drivers to the need to slow down. Question 16. Why is it important to make full use of the slip road as you join a motorway? D. To allow you to fit safely into the traffic flow in the left-hand lane. Try to join the motorway without affecting the progress of the traffic in the left-hand lane and always give way to traffic already on the motorway. At busy times, you may have to slow down to merge into slow-moving traffic. Question 17. What should you do if you have to make a journey in foggy conditions?
D. Leave plenty of time for your journey. If you're planning to make a journey when it's foggy, listen to the weather reports. If visibility is very poor, avoid making unnecessary journeys. If you do travel, leave plenty of time, and if someone is waiting for you to arrive, let them know that your journey will take longer than normal. This will also take off any pressure you may feel to rush. Question 18. You're driving at the legal speed limit. What should you do if the vehicle behind approaches quickly, flashing its headlights? B. Allow the vehicle to overtake. Don't enforce the speed limit by blocking another vehicle's progress. This will only lead to the other driver becoming more frustrated. Allow the other vehicle to pass when you can do so safely. Question 19. You're waiting at a level crossing. What must you do if a train passes but the lights keep flashing? A. Carry on waiting. If the lights at a level crossing keep flashing after a train has passed, you should continue to wait, because another train might be coming. Time seems to pass slowly when you're held up in a queue. Be patient and wait until the lights stop flashing. Question 20. Your vehicle is stationary. When may you use its horn? A. When another road user poses a danger. When your vehicle is stationary, only sound the horn if you think there's a risk of danger from another road user. Don't use it just to attract someone's attention. This causes unnecessary noise and could be misleading. Question 21. When will your vehicle use more fuel? D. When its tires are underinflated. Check your tire pressures frequently, normally once a week. If they're lower than those recommended by the manufacturer, there will be more rolling resistance. The engine will have to work harder to overcome this, leading to increased fuel consumption. Question 22. Powered vehicles used by disabled people are small and can be hard to see. What must they display if they're traveling on a dual carriageway? A. Flashing Amber Beacon Powered vehicles used by disabled people are small and low making them hard to see on the road. They also travel very slowly. On an unrestricted dual carriageway, they must display a flashing amber beacon to warn other road users of their presence. Question 23. What should you do while you're driving or riding along a motorway? B. Look much further ahead than you would on other roads. Traffic on motorways usually travels faster than on other roads. You need to be looking further ahead to give yourself more time to react to any hazard that may develop. Question 24. You plan your route before starting a journey. Why should you also plan an alternative route? D. Your original route may be blocked. It can be frustrating and worrying to find your planned route is blocked by roadworks or diversions. If you've planned an alternative, you'll feel less stressed and more able to concentrate fully on your driving or riding. If your original route is mostly on motorways, it's a good idea to plan an alternative using non-motorway roads. 
Always carry a map with you just in case you need to refer to it. Question 25. What's the maximum fine for driving without insurance? A. Unlimited. Driving without insurance is a serious offense. As well as an unlimited fine, you may be disqualified or incur penalty points. Question 26. Where would it be unsafe to overtake? A. Approaching a junction. You should overtake only when it's really necessary and you can see it's clear ahead. Look out for road signs and markings that show it's illegal or would be unsafe to overtake, for example, approaching junctions or bends. In many cases, overtaking is unlikely to significantly improve your journey time. Question 27. Which of these signs warns you of a zebra crossing? A. Look well ahead and check the pavements and surrounding areas for pedestrians. Look for anyone walking towards the crossing. Check your mirrors for traffic behind, in case you have to slow down or stop. Question 28. At an incident, someone is unconscious and you want to help. What would be the first thing to check? A. Whether their airway is open. Remember this procedure by saying DRABC. This stands for danger, response, airway, breathing, circulation. Give whatever first aid you can and stay with the injured person until a medical professional takes over. Question 29. After a collision, someone is unconscious in their vehicle. When should you call the emergency services? C. As soon as possible. It's important to make sure that the emergency services arrive as soon as possible. When a person is unconscious, they could have serious injuries that aren't immediately obvious. Question 30. At an incident, how could you help a casualty who has stopped breathing? A. Follow the DRABC code. The DRABC code has been devised by medical experts to give the best outcome until the emergency services arrive and take care of casualties. Question 31. You're driving behind a large goods vehicle. What should you do if it signals left but steers to the right? D. Slow down and let the vehicle turn. Large, long vehicles need extra room when making turns at junctions. They may move out to the right in order to make a left turn. Keep well back and don't attempt to pass them on their left. Question 32. Why is it important to wear suitable shoes when you're driving? C. To maintain control of the pedals. When you're going to drive, make sure that you're wearing suitable clothing. Comfortable shoes will ensure that you have proper control of the foot pedals. Question 33. You've driven up to a pelican crossing. What must you do while the amber light is flashing?
B. Give way to any pedestrians on the crossing. The flashing amber light allows pedestrians already on the crossing to get to the other side before a green light shows to the traffic. Be aware that some pedestrians, such as older people and young children, need longer to cross. Let them do this at their own pace. Question 34. Why could it be dangerous to reverse from a side road into a main road? D. Your view will be restricted. Don't reverse into a main road from a side road because your view will be restricted. The main road is likely to be busy and the traffic on it moving quickly. Question 35. What does this white arrow on the road mean? C. Return to your side of the road. The arrow indicates the direction in which to pass hatch markings or double white lines. If you're overtaking, you must return to the left-hand side of the road. Question 36. You're driving your car. When may you use a handheld mobile phone? C. When you've parked safely. It's illegal to use a handheld mobile phone while you're driving, except in a genuine emergency. Even using a hands-free kit can distract your attention. Park in a safe and convenient place before receiving or making a call or using text messaging. Then you'll also be free to take notes or refer to papers. Question 37. What part of the car does the law require you to keep in good condition? C. The seat belts. Unless exempt, you and your passengers must wear a seat belt, or suitable child restraint. The seat belts in your car must be in good condition and working properly, they'll be checked during its mo test. Question 38. You want to turn right at a box junction. What should you do if there's oncoming traffic? D. Wait in the box junction if your exit is clear. You can wait in the box junction as long as your exit is clear. At some point there'll be a gap in the oncoming traffic, or the traffic lights will change, allowing you to proceed. Question 39. Why could it be dangerous to keep the clutch down, or select neutral, for long periods of time while you're driving? D. You'll have less steering and braking control. Letting your vehicle roll or coast in neutral reduces your control over steering and braking. This can be dangerous on downhill slopes, where your vehicle could pick up speed very quickly. Question 40. Why do motests include an exhaust emission test? B. To help protect the environment against pollution. Emission tests are carried out to make sure your vehicle's engine is operating efficiently. This ensures the pollution produced by the engine is kept to a minimum. If your vehicle isn't serviced regularly, it may fail the MO emissions test. Question 41. Which type of glasses would make driving at night more difficult? D. Tinted. If you're driving at night or in poor visibility, T. 
tinted lenses will reduce the efficiency of your vision by reducing the amount of light reaching your eyes. Question 42. You're driving in busy traffic. You want to pull up just after a junction on the left. When should you signal? A. As you're passing or just after the junction. You need to signal to let other drivers know your intentions. However, if you indicate too early, they may think you're turning left into the junction. Correct timing of the signal is very important to avoid misleading others. Question 43. Where would parking your vehicle cause an obstruction? C. In front of a property entrance. Don't park your vehicle where it may obstruct access to a business or property. Think carefully before you slow down and stop. Look at road markings and signs to ensure that you aren't parking illegally. Question 44. There's been a heavy fall of snow. What should you consider before driving in these conditions? V. Whether your journey is essential. Consider whether the increased risk is worth it. If the weather conditions are bad and your journey isn't essential, then don't drive. If you have to drive, make sure you're well prepared in case you get stuck. Question 45. What should you do if you're driving a slow-moving vehicle on a narrow winding road? C. Pull in when you can, to let the vehicles behind overtake. If you're driving a slow-moving vehicle along a narrow road, try not to hold up faster traffic. If you see vehicles following behind, pull over in a safe place and let the traffic pass before continuing. Don't wave other traffic past, this could be dangerous if you or they haven't noticed a hazard ahead. Question 46. What will help you to keep your car secure? C. Registering with a Vehicle Watch Scheme The Vehicle Watch Scheme helps to reduce the risk of your car being stolen. By displaying high visibility vehicle watch stickers in your car, you're inviting the police to stop your vehicle if it's seen in use between midnight and 5 a.m. Question 47. What does third-party insurance cover? B. Damage to other vehicles. Third-party insurance cover is usually cheaper than comprehensive cover. However, it doesn't cover any damage caused to your own vehicle or property. It only covers damage and injury you cause to others. Question 48. What should you do when dealing with this hazard? Do use a low gear and drive slowly. In normal conditions, a Ford can be crossed quite safely by driving through it slowly. The water may affect your brakes, so when you're clear of the Ford, test them before you resume normal driving. Question 49. What should you do if you overtake a cyclist when it's very windy? A. Allow extra room. Cyclists, and motorcyclists, are very vulnerable in high winds. They can easily be blown well off course and veer into your path. 
always allow plenty of room when overtaking them. Passing too close could cause a draft and unbalance the rider. Question 50. What's the first thing you must do if you have a collision while you're driving your car? See stop at the scene of the incident. If you're in a collision that causes damage or injury to any other person, vehicle, animal or property, by law you must stop. Give your name, the vehicle owner's name and address, and the vehicle's registration number to anyone who has reasonable grounds for requesting them. If you learn DVSA theory test in proper way, you can download theory test app from the app store link in the description. Thanks for watching the video.